I murder a problem, it's like my solution is lethal. This is minimum operations to make all array elements equal, my boy. So you're given an array nums consisting of positive integers. Sounds good. You are also given an integer array queries of size M. All right. So I have, let's just say that N equals the length of the array and M equals the length of queries. Don't know if that's that important, but it probably will be in terms of the time complexity. So it's something to consider. You, for the ith query, you want to make all the elements of nums equal to queries of i. Right, so you have nums that could be one, two, three, four, five, and then your query item is one, you wanna make all of them one, right? So one, two, three, four, five becomes one, 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 or something like that. You can perform the following operation on the array any number of times. So I can increase or decrease an element of the array by one. All right, so if I wanted to turn one to five, I'd have to increase four times. Right? I'd take one, increase once to make it two, increase twice to make it three, increase thrice to make it four, increase four times to make it five, right? And if I want to turn five to one, I'd have to decrease five four times to make it one, okay? Return an array answer of size M where answer I is the minimum number of operations to make all elements of nums equals to queries of I. Okay, note that each query, the array the, is set to its original state, right? So you don't like decrease everything to one and then if the next value is five, you increase everything to five. No, so you just see, given the way that nums is, what would you have to do to make it turn into one. You don't actually turn them all into the query value. If that doesn't make sense, we'll, we'll go through an example and, and I'll, I'll kind of mention that discrepancy or distinction. Okay, so for example, if we had the example, pull, pull, example, nums equals 3168. What a beautiful array, three, one, six, eight. And queries equals 14 and 10. Since to the point of what I said previously, um, you know, these are all independent problems, right? So there's an independent problem where I check the query of 14. There's an independent problem of checking the query 10. So let's look at, um, sorry, I was looking at the answer and not the, so queries equals one, five, right? So the way that this works is, well, what do I have to do to nums to turn them all into one? Well, I'm gonna have to take three, one, six, and eight, right? And I need to turn them all into ones, right? So this is what I'm given, and this is the result. So in order to do that, I have to take three and turn it into one. Well, the, in order to turn three into one by decrementing by one, I'm gonna, basically it's just the delta, right? It's the difference between them, right? It's the difference between three and one, right? To turn three into one, I need to go two steps. So that's three minus one. And then I'm gonna have to, I'm trying to figure out the total number of operations I'm gonna have to do. So in order to turn one into one, I'm gonna have to do one minus one steps, which is nothing. In order to turn six into one, I'm gonna have to do six minus one operations. Right, and then in order to turn eight into one, I'm gonna have to do eight minus one operations. Right, because if I all I can do is decrement by one, it's just the difference between them in terms of the number of operations that I have to do, right? So this is two, this is zero, this is five, and this is seven. So if we add all these together, we get 14, which is why that's the answer here for the first query, right? And then to the previous point that might've been a little bit confusing, right? The array is not now all ones, right? It's the initial array, initial array again, and we do the operation three, one, six, and eight, right? So this is for the one example. Now for the, let's do the five uh, query here, right? So for five, we have to convert this array, which is three, one, six, eight, we need to convert it into five, 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 five. So what are we gonna have to do to three to turn it to five? Well, we're gonna have to add two. So that's the same thing as five minus three plus five minus one 
plus, well, to turn six into five, we're gonna have to do six minus five operations. To turn eight into five, we're gonna have to do eight minus five operations, right? And then when we do that, we get uh, two, four, one, three, seven, eight, ten. And voila, 1410. Okay, so this problem, if it's solved in this manner where you literally just look at nums and you look at the query value and you find the difference between all numbers, right, is pretty straightforward. But the constraint is, is if the we have n equals the length of the array or length of nums, sorry, and m is the length of queries, well, they're both less than or equal to 10 to the 5. So in the worst case, you're going to have to look at all m queries and do n operations for each m query. So that's n m time. So n m time would be 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 5. In the worst case, 10 to the 10. That's going to give you a time limit exceeded error, right? That's far too slow. So when you look at this example, given the constraints, the kind of straightforward example, the straightforward solution of just, okay, look at the query value, compare it to each of the numbers, and then return the sum, that's going to be far too slow. So you need to think about maybe how we're going to do this in a more clever fashion to constrain that runtime down because it, you know n times m is far too slow for these constraints. So I guess what we can do first, this is one of those problems where the example can really reveal kind of the manner in which you're supposed to solve this problem. You know, when I started reading this problem, I didn't think about this, but when I did the example, what started to show up is like this idea of prefix sums, right? Pre-populating sums and kind of the caveats associated with that. And that'll make more sense in a second. So basically this is the formula, not the formula, but you know, this is what we're computing when we find this value, right? So is there a different way of describing this computation in a closed form formula? Meaning, is there a way that I can describe this computation in constant time? Well, if we just reordered these elements, right? Right, if I took these values first, right, I wouldn't be breaking any mathematical rules if I just said, oh, well, this is three plus one plus six plus eight. And then I just subtracted out these values right? Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, right? So I'm just moving values around. And what you'll notice from this is, well, this is just the sum of the original array, right? So this is just the sum of the array nums, right? And well, for each element, we subtract one to find its difference from one, right? So this is just the number of elements in the array. So this is just minus the length of nums times our query value, one. So I'm gonna just put query value here, Q, but just know that Q equals one, right? So the formula in a closed form solution is, well, if I wanna find the difference between one and all these elements, well, I just take the sum of nums, right? Because that's the sum of these values and then find its difference from the number of ones that I'm subtracting out. And that'll give me the total difference, which is the amount that I'm gonna have to decrement to get this as a solution, right? So I take the sum of nums and I minus the length of nums times this query value Q, which equals one in this example to determine how many ones I'm gonna to subtract out. And whatever's remaining is the difference between the nums and the query value I'm trying to get to, right? So this is a closed form solution that makes perfect sense within this context, but there is a small caveat. And why this is the idea of prefix sum, by the way, is right, is we can pre-compute this sums of nums value, right? We can pre-compute this value. So then for the remaining uh, queries, we would just calculate this in constant time, right? We pre-compute the sum of nums. So then this is a pre-compute value in constant time, constant time, constant time. So for all Q queries, we just do a constant operation. That's uh, uh, O of Q times O of one, O of Q, right? So that looks nice, but there's a small caveat, like I said, right here, it's a little bit different. Well, you know, the issue was is well, since the query value was less than or equal to all the nums, 
it always followed this straightforward form, right? It always followed the form where we take the num and we subtract the query value. We take the num, we subtract the query value. But here, and, and the reason why that is, right, is because everything gets decremented. Three is decremented down to one. One is unchanged. Six gets decremented down to one. Eight gets decremented down to one. So it's a, everything's going in one direction in this solution. So it's very clear what the closed form solution, the closed form formula is. Here, well, the three doesn't get decremented to one. It gets incremented to five, right? So the difference is the difference between three and five. It's the absolute difference that we're trying to find, right? And since we're trying to find the absolute difference, right? How far is the query value from the number in nums, right? Since we're trying to find that delta, we don't want negative values, right? We want the, the, the absolute difference to determine how many operations we need to do. So we're not going to subtract five from three because that will give us negative two. We're not doing negative two operations to get three to five. We're doing two operations to get three to five. So since we need the absolute difference, we need to figure out, okay, what's the difference between five and three? That's five minus three, not three minus five, right? Same here. We do five minus one instead of one minus five. This, on the other hand, is something that we're used to, right? This is six minus five and eight minus five because we're decrementing six to get to five. We're decrementing eight to get to five. So it's, it's clearer there. So if we wanted to think about this in terms of the solution, well, you know, we get, we kind of have two parts now to this system, right? And we add them both together. I'm just going to split them up like this so we can kind of intuitively understand what's going on here. Well, the second half is kind of what we're used to, right? We take six and eight, and then we subtract out our query value minus five. And then there's two values that we're comparing that to by five, right? So I'm literally just rewriting this system, right? So if I wanted to rewrite this in a manner that made sense in terms of how we did it before, right? We would say, well, you know, it'd be, if we did it in the same manner we did before, right? Sorry, I'm all over the place. If we did it in the same manner we did before, we'd say, okay, well, you know, we are doing what here exactly? So I was just thinking about something that kind of blew my mind a little bit, but that's neither here or there. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Just sometimes something hits you while you're solving the problem that leads you down an alternative path, but that alternative path is actually uh, a subsequent step. So I'm thinking about an alternate so alternative solution at a subsequent step, which doesn't relate to this right now, but that's fine. Okay. So, well, how are we going to explain this? You know, this is... If we did this in the uh, the original way, it'd be minus three, minus one, plus six, plus eight, plus five, plus five, minus five, minus five, right? And this would be like the array, but it's no longer the sum of the array because there's some negative terms and there's some positive terms, right? Above, it was the sum of the array because it was all positive terms. And it was minus the length of nums times Q because it was all negative terms for Q. So it was very nice and neat. But here, since you're not decrementing everything, right? Not everything's going in one direction. We kind of have a mixture of both, right? Now we have, what well, we have the sum of the array minus, you know, this these values over here. And then we have some minus fives. We have some plus fives. So there's really two classes of solution, right? There's the initial solution, which is like, you take the sum of the values and then the amount of, you're going to have to decrement them, right? So this is for decrementing over here. But then you also have the incrementing parts, right? You have plus two times five over here and then minus three minus one over here, right? Because, well, for some terms you're incrementing. So you have to find the incrementing difference. And for some terms you're decrementing. So you have to find the decrementing difference. So there's like two separate solutions depending on how you want to look at this. And this can be further simplified by saying, well, this is two times five minus the sum of the array up to a certain point, right? Because this is, if you wanted to rewrite this, uh, you know, you could say this as well. This is two times five minus three plus one. Right, so there's this interesting kind of like split point, right? 
because if we're incrementing, we do one kind of formula. And if we're decrementing, we do some other formula, right? And it's all relating to the prefix sum, right? Because this is the prefix sum of one and three, and this is the prefix sum excluding one and three, right? So this would be the whole prefix sum minus one plus three, right? So if you wanted to think about that in terms of a prefix sum, where if you did a prefix sum of this array, well, there's kind of two steps here. The first thing is everything that's less than the query value gets incremented and we put it in this box over here. Everything that's greater than greater than or equal to, however you want to look at it, everything that's greater than or equal to the query value goes in this box over there, right? So we need to find kind of, in order to do this problem accurately, we need to kind of split it into two parts and it's based on the query value, right? So for this problem, if we want to find out what needs to be incremented and what needs to be decremented, we need to know everything that's less than the value and everything that's greater than the value, right? So if we had three, one, six, and eight, maybe the first thing we should do is we should take three, one, six, and eight, and we should sort it. So we have one, three, six, and eight. And then when we're dealing with five, right, when we have our query value of five, we can say, well, where would five go in this array? Well, five would go here, right? So that means that everything's to the left of five is going to get incremented and everything to the right of five is going to get decremented, right? So if we sort the array and then we find out where the query value should be inside of that array, everything to the left, right? Everything to the left of that value is smaller than the query value. So it's going to get incremented. So you're going to put it in this box over here. Everything to the right of the value is larger than it. So it's going to get decremented. So it's going to get put in this box over here. So how does that work in terms of efficiency? Because, you know, the way that we're doing this right now, it's like, okay, so yeah, it's true that, you know, it's a, it's an uh, not obvious, but it's an observation that, you know, everything that's less than the value gets incremented, everything greater than the value gets decremented. So how does that help us find something more efficient, right? Because it's like, well, you're still doing all these calculations. Well, I guess what you could say here is, well, you know, what we can do is this prefix sum idea, right? And we'll do the prefix sum after we sort. And our prefix sum would be 1, 4, 10, 18, right? And we can say, well, what we're really doing here is if 5 is here, right? That means there's two elements that I'm comparing to 5, right? So there's these, we're going to call it... Uh, there's L elements that we're comparing to five. And their sum is this here, right? So this value four components to this value, right? And this value L tells you this value here. And then the difference between the length of the array and L tells you this value here. And then the sum of the whole system minus L tells you this value here. So it gets pretty confusing. So let's try to think about it in kind of kind of more um, general terms. And maybe that'll help us here, right? If we have the sorted list, A, B, C, dot, 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 X, uh, let's just call it J, dot, 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 dot xyz here right if we found an element for a query value that went here right that means everything that's to the left of this query value abc or we'll just put it we'll put on the other side of j i mean it's the same problem here okay whatever right that means everything to the left is um Everything to the left, we're going to increment. Everything to the right, we're going to decrement, right? So if we had, if we write this in a, in a clear form, where that means that I'm going to have to do query minus J, query minus this element, query minus this element, query minus this element, query minus this element. So however many elements are here, I'm going to have to do query minus that, right? So there's this other value here, L, that's the length of this system um, from the left, right? And then I'm going to have to subtract 
L from all these, right? Because what I'm going to really do is I'm going to do query minus A plus query minus B plus query minus C plus dot, 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 plus query minus J, right? So if we reorder this again, well, how many elements are there? Well, there's query, let's use the same color here. There's query, ugh. there's query, query, query times L elements. And then what are we subtracting out? Where we're subtracting out A plus B plus C plus dot, 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 dot plus J. Right, so that's the left side of the equation. Now, what I'll do is I'll say, well, this is the prefix sum up to J. Right, so I'll rewrite this then as the prefix sum up to J. Right? And that's the left side. Now, for the right side, how many elements are there? Well, the total length of this system, right? The length of nums goes all the way to the end here. So the the length here is just the length of nums minus L, right? So on the right side of our equation, we're going to have how many elements that we're going to multiply by Q? We're going to have Q, and then it's going to be times the length of nums minus L, because that's how many elements on the right we're going to have to decrement, right? But this, of course, is now negative, right? Because it's on the other side. Man, I'm all over the place, dude. I'm sorry, right? Because, right, it's, this is the elements that we're decrementing. So the query value is going to be subtracted, right? And then the sum here is going to be everything greater than J, right? So all the sum values here are, you know, da, 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 plus X plus Y plus Z, all right? Now, in terms of a prefix sum, well, that's the, the entire prefix sum would be all of this, right? So in order to find what gets subtracted out, we would just minus the, not all of this, right? The entire prefix sum would be the sum of this whole system, right? So if we want to subtract out everything up to J, we would take the prefix sum of the whole system minus the prefix sum up to J, right? So this solution has... a multiple moving parts we need to think about what's the relationship of the prefix sum what's the relationship in terms of the number of queries of the incremented and the decremented to get this kind of closed form solution right so this would then be replaced with well this is actually just the prefix sum of the whole system up to z minus the prefix sum up to j minus the query value times the length of nums minus L. So the whole solution then is the query value times this value L minus the prefix sum up to the index that we're looking that that L is at. So that would be L, right? And then you take that whole system, you add in the prefix sum up to the, the last value, so we'll just call that negative one, minus the prefix sum up to L. Ah, dude. Minus query times length of nums minus L. So that's the whole formula for the solution, all based off this initial value, right? So, and that's what this is right here, right? You know. How many values to the left? If we place five here, there's two values to the left that I'm gonna have to compare it to. I'm gonna multiply it by five and I'm gonna subtract it by the sum up to this point, which is four. So that's all the increments that I'm gonna have to do. For decrements, well, I'm gonna add in all the values that are greater than five. So that's the prefix sum, the total prefix sum, subtracting one and three, so six plus eight here. And then I'm gonna subtract the number of elements, uh, the delta, because I'm gonna have two elements to the right so there's two cases where I'm gonna to have to find this difference. So I'm gonna subtract the query value twice from that. And the sum of that together gives you the final answer. So with that, let's try to make this work, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sort nums, all right? And then we need to make this prefix sum, right? So we'll say prefix sum equals nums plus zero. So we're gonna have a little buffer. Um, 
and it'll make sense in a moment while we're doing that. But for now, just know that we have this little buffer, okay? And then we're gonna create this prefix sum array. So the easiest way to make a prefix sum array um, is just say prefix sum of i plus equal prefix sum of i minus one. And then it's never a bad idea to verify um, that that actually worked as intended, right? So we can print prefix sum. We'll just return nothing for now because it's gonna error. I mean, it's gonna be wrong, but it's gonna error if we don't return something, right? Because it's expecting a list returned, right? So the prefix sum is one, four, 10, 18, and then that buffer value zero that we're gonna describe its purpose in a moment, which makes sense, right? If we sorted this, right? Because the first value would be one, then you add three to get four, then you add six to get 10, then you add eight to get 18. So that would be the prefix sum of this system, right? Now we just need to uh, calculate each of the solutions using this notion of what we're incrementing and what we're decrementing, right? So we're going to look at each query value in queries, right? And then what we did here, right, is we need to find the place for the value, right? We found that five belongs here in the sorted array. We could do that in linear time, but that would negate the benefit of everything that we've just calculated, right? Um, so if we have to find where it is linearly, we're going to do n operations anyways. But if you know that it's sorted, you could do a binary search to find where this value would be to make the array sorted, right? So we are going to use the bisect library. So the bisect library essentially allows you to find where this element would go if the list was sorted. Right, so that would be the number of elements to your left. So if you said bisect dot bisect left, we're gonna bisect nums and we're looking for the value query, right? So for here, I'll just show you how this works, right? So if we had nums and then the the L value for the query, just so you can see kind of in reality what's supposed to be happening here, right? So it's saying if you're looking where would one go in this array, you would insert it at the very beginning, right? Where would five go in this array? You would insert it at index two, right? Because zero, one, two. So five would go here to make this thing sorted, right? That's where five would go. And it also happens to be where five would be at, at index two. Everything before index two is less than five and everything greater than index two is greater than or equal to five, right? Same with zero, one, right? If I put one at index zero, so I, I kind of pull it and put it before this one, everything to the left, which is nothing, is less than or equal, I mean, is less than one, and everything to the right is greater than or equal to one. And it does this via binary search, right? You can do a binary search where you try to find, you know, the smallest value that's larger than the current value. We could write that code, but you can also just conveniently use this bisect library, which takes log n time because it's gonna do a binary search in a sorted array to find the position of an element. And that position will tell you everything to the left of that position is less than the element. Everything to the right of that position is greater than or equal to the element. Okay. So now that we have this L value, well, we just do this formula, right? We say res append. We're gonna do the decrement. So we'll do it We'll do it um, kind of verbosely just so that it makes sense, right? When we're decrementing, what well, we're saying, we're gonna take our query value and there's gonna be L of them, right? Right, like in this example, when it's five, there's gonna be two query values, right? So I multiply the decrement value by L. I'm thinking about five here, right? Cause five would be here. So there'd be two decrement values. And then I'm gonna subtract the prefix sum at L minus one, right? Because if L was two, I'm supposed to subtract three and one from this solution, right? I'm trying to piece together the code here, right? For five, if it's giving me two, I'm supposed to subtract three and one here, right? So that would be four, which would be prefix sum at one, okay? So that would be the decrement for increment, 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 excuse me. Well, I'm going to have, if it's two, the length is four. That means there's two remaining, right? So this was zero. The length is four. There's four remaining. So I'd do the length. I would do uh, the other way, right? Because now this goes over here. So it would be Q times, ugh, 
the length of nums minus L, because that would be how many elements there are that I'm subtracting, right? Um, and then the PS values, well, now I have the, the total prefix sum of the whole system, which is minus two since we have this extra zero, minus PS of L minus one. That'll give you the difference, right? Because if I just want to add up six and eight to find this delta, I need to subtract three and one if I do the whole prefix sum, right? So I take the whole prefix sum and then I subtract out the, the terms to the left, right? Because I want to exclude one and three, so then I only include uh, six and eight, okay? So that would be our increment decrement term. So then res, I would append increment plus decrement, right? So how far do I have to decrement elements to get them to the right place? How far do I have to increment elements to get them to the right place? Or whatever. All right. And then I just return res at the end. All right. Now I'm going to make this a little bit shorter if it's right. Okay. So we don't need to, you know, we can just put all this in here. No reason to do it like that. All right. So what is the run in space? So the kind of most intuitive, straightforward solution was m times n time, right? This solution is a little bit more complicated. So if we say n is the length of nums, and we say m is the length of queries, well, we have to sort n, so that's n log n time. We create this prefix sum and populate it with n, so that's another n values. We look at all q queries, so there's m queries. And then we do a bisect of num, so that's log of m operations, log of n operations. And then we do a constant a constant calculation, right? Because this is a pre-computed sum, pre-computed sum, a couple constant values and another pre-computed sum. So that's um, m log n and then a constant operation, so that's just m log n. So then the whole runtime of this solution is, well, this is going to get shadowed by this term here. So this goes away. Um, then you have m log n operations here. So you could just call this succinctly n plus m times log n operations, right. which is much better than n times m, right? Because log of n is just going to scale slowly. So this is basically linear. This is more or less just n plus m. So we've taken something from n times m and made it n plus m. Now, of course, there's a log n term, but I'm just saying that's kind of what the scale is in terms of how much the solutions improve. Um, in terms of space, well, we have to create an array for all the queries. So we're going to have m queries. Of course I remembered. Well, how could I forget? They wrote my mom a letter and my daddy threw a fit. All right, so we have to create m indices because we have m queries we have to save values for. And then we have to create a prefix sum, which is related to n, right? Because we have an, an index for each value that um, we set in our prefix sum. So that's m plus n space. Uh, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, why did we use the zero? Well, since I'm doing the prefix sum minus one, if I went too far negative, it will go negative one and Python will give you the last value. So I'm just making the last value zero so that um, it doesn't create an issue. And then that would make this minus two because there's this dummy value here. So the actual sum of the array is minus two. So that's just a little trick to make your code a little bit um, cleaner, maybe not cleaner, but shorter, uh, yeah. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you uh, had a good time solving this problem like I did. Bye.